Hi, I'm Paul McGowan. Thanks for joining me today. We are, well, I don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but a couple of people have asked about my little nipper. This, well, you all know who this is. This is Nipper, the original RCA dog. This is a beautiful pottery or whatever you call that, but it actually has fur on it. And this particular nipper is, um, is one of my treasures. I've got a little nipper collection. And my good friend, Chris Stasik, a doctor down in Fort Collins gave this to me, and he is never getting it back. Thanks, Chris. That's Nipper. Nipper is very cool. Okay, let's see what we have. There's a little Nipper here, too. But he's, I don't know where he came from. Not as cool as the real Nipper over there. All right, let's see what we got. David from Lake Bluff, Illinois writes, Paul, we go to extreme lengths for the best interconnects and thick, beautiful speaker cables to drive our speakers. Yes, we do, David. <laughs> Yet when my Teal CS6s had a driver replaced a few years ago, I noticed the wires from the crossover to the driver itself were extremely thin. How does this wire handle the power? Wow. Excellent question. Thank you. Thank you, David. If you take apart a speaker, regardless if it's my giant Infinity IRS-5s, many kinds of speakers I've had internally, on most of those speakers, not all, but on most of those speakers, you've got weenie wire, 12 gauge signal wire or 16 gauge. It's, it's pretty thin stuff relative to these big, horse leg uh, cables and interconnects that connect it all up. And it's a really good question. I mean, I certainly built enough speakers when I was at uh, Genesis and my friend Arnie Nudell, who the original designer of Infinity, and, and he and I, he was the speaker designer. I was the electronic guy. But we built tons of speakers. And while we chose really good wire. One time we use a product called Cardis cables. George Cardis makes some great internal wiring cables. We used, I think we used AudioQuest at one point too. And those individual wires feeding individual drivers seem to work just fine. I have never personally tried taking horse leg thick speaker cable wiring up to each driver. It would be almost impossible to build something like that. But I can tell you that the internal wiring on speakers does matter. It does make a difference. We paid great attention to that when we were at Genesis. But you're right. It's certainly smaller looking. And in general, I think most loudspeaker companies, the manufacturing end of them, pay less attention than we do as consumers and people that connect speakers up to power amplifiers and interconnects that connect all of that together. So I don't think I have a really great answer for you, but I can tell you that it does make a difference and a number of companies do pay attention to what goes in there, but it'll never be what you have connected up to your speakers and your amplifier. Not, not as far as anything I've ever seen. Great question. Thanks, David. Talk to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.